Hi, James here, and I had this wonderful opportunity to sit down through the Zoom sphere with Amit and Andrew on the Digital Growth Show, and we talked podcasting. It was really a lot of fun, and you know what? It was so much fun. I want you to get another hit of it, so I'm posting it here on the James Cast. Take a look. I'm going to put all the links up for you to go and take a look at what the folks are doing over at Digital Nexa. Pretty exquisite, and you're going to want to watch other. You got it. You're going to want to watch some of the other, if not all of the other, digital growth shows because they all bring something interesting to the table when we're talking about our online presence, how we're taking our practical organizations and our practical ventures into a digital sphere, things you need to think about, things you might want to forget. And Amit and Andrew are absolutely spot on and dialed in with that number one issue that so many of us are trying to navigate and are trying to think about: how to monetize and how to sustain what you're doing in a digital sphere. Hey, give it a listen, give it a watch. Here it is, my piece, <laughs> my edition. To the Digital Growth Show, talking podcasting, awesome. Andrew, how are you? Good. How are you? How's things? Sorry, very good. Good to see. You. Yes, it's good to see you as well. Um, it's uh, it's been a bit of a busy week, and it's only Tuesday, so um, it's uh, how are things your side? Yeah, good actually. Yeah, it's been it's been crazy busy so far. So. Uh, yeah, very positive. The lift of August, which is uh, which is good, as long as we continue to see that kind of like this, uh, that's good. I think someone called it the Corolla Coaster, uh, which is kind of like <laughs> up and down, up and down. So when I say someone, I think uh, it's, it's me. Um, but I look back ask, actually yeah. on old uh, old episodes, and episode one of uh, of the Digital Growth Show, I actually put a date in August um, when I think it was all going to be all right. So I don't know. It's you know. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. I think, I think such a crystal ball. Well, we I think when we originally kind of planned this out, we blocked in eight sessions and thinking that would probably be enough, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, good stuff. So welcome to the uh, growth show, everyone. Uh, happy to for you to join us um, today. We've got a cracking show lined up um, and a fantastic guest on 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 his way as well. We'll do a bit of an introduction in a minute thank you for see the guys popping in now and girls we can got some regulars so hi to the to the regular folks that are watching us every week and some new faces so um for those of you that don't know uh we're happy to make it an interactive show if you want if you have any questions for for us or the guest by all means kind of drop it in the uh, q a and the chat um but we're just kind of uh, here for a lively discussion today um so would you like to introduce uh our guest Amit, or would you like me to um I, let me let me start off and then when i when i kind of start butchering get feel free to jump in andrew <laughs> so um no so look as always super excited about the show today um and and for a number of reasons i think we've we've both known james for a while i think you've you've known james uh longer than longer than i have and i've obviously worked with him on a professional level as well uh, so I think it'd be good to kind of hear more about that. But um, yeah, I mean, while I was kind of excited as well, is because um, you know normally, and I guess we're getting a little bit more vain, Andrew, as this kind of show and sort of series progresses, because we've now started talking about you know what shirt we've worn, have we worn this shirt before, and genuinely today, this was probably the only episode where I just wasn't, I know I've worn this pink shirt before and it's fine. That's it, yeah. Because, yeah, because the second James comes on, on the show and we start to see what he's wearing, we, you know, everything will become much more clearer. So this is probably, you know, I'd say the wearer of the most famous shirts in Dubai. If, uh, James James is, is a wonderful character. He's um, been on the Dubai scene for a long, long time as a professional broadcaster. Um, and, and, and this is the point you take over, Andrew. Yeah, no, I mean, look, if, if you don't know James, uh, you will do after this. Um, so as you said, uh, you know, heavily involved in not only kind of educating um, a lot of uh, a lot of the youth of uh, youth of tomorrow and has been involved in that for the last 20 years, but also avid uh, broadcaster 
a podcaster and everything and above uh, uh, above there. So yeah, um, obviously at a professional level, worked uh, with James on the radio and then now in podcasting and on a personal level, a good friend of ours. So yeah, um, we should we should probably bring him in, right? Because I mean, we his head's going to explode be. now because he's just like, oh, no, there he is, yeah, yeah, there he is, there he is, right? <laughs> Hey, James. Hey, how's it going? Great to be here, guys. It's great, great to have to, you here. Uh, good to have you here. And, and it's nice that you're both monochromatic in your shirt colors because it makes <laughs> me stand out beautifully. <laughs> but this, 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 was, this was exactly the point, right? It just doesn't is, matter what me and Andrew are wearing this way. Yeah, this exactly. is Andrew, Andrew and Amit right here. This is them. <laughs> <laughs> there, well, there they are. There they are. <laughs> that's it. Nice. The, the butterflies and dragonflies. That's, uh, that's very cool. Yeah. And actually, to be fair, we should have said as well. I mean, I don't know how many pairs of glasses do you own, James? Roughly. Uh, I'm down to five. So we'll uh, we'll 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 start working on that. <laughs> yeah. Those are popping colours awesome. and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. <laughs> awesome. So we've already had some comments in about your shirt. Um, and we've yep. just been told that he's so much cooler than the host. So, uh, <laughs> unbelievable. Yeah, so, so what a, what a great, what a great start. To the show. <laughs> yeah, it's really nice. <laughs> Good start. It's a, it's a really positive. So actually, I, I think what is unusual, uh, quite possibly, I don't know if you're on that side of the table many times, as far as, no. you know, uh, you are usually the, the host with the most as it were. So I guess this feels a tad strange, um, kind of people directing, directing things at you, right? Yeah, yeah, I have no control at this moment. Whatever you said, you, you have all the control of this whole conversation. It's horrible, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry. I'm, I'm sure at some point you'll hijack it. So it, it's fine. It's not, it's not a problem. I, I, I envision at the end of the show you saying, yep, thanks very much, guys. Uh, I'm Andrew. Really appreciate you being on my digital pro show today. <laughs> Yeah, which is which is which is what our audience wants by the sounds of it. Well. So, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I think, yeah. I think, I think let's, yeah, exactly. So let's crack on. James, I mean, I think you know, a lot of people out there are familiar, you know, of your work. Um, perhaps they don't know um your day job, I guess, you yeah. know, in terms of what you do. So I think some context about, you know, what you do and, and kind of you know how you've got into you know where you are today, I think that'd be really kind of useful. Yeah, well, by, by day, I'm a university professor at Zaid University here in Dubai. I teach in the College of Communication and Media Sciences. I've been here since 2000, so that's 20 years. And I've been in the same university and the same college teaching similar kind of courses. I'm a theory guy, actually. You know, I teach media ethics and law and some research occasionally and introduction to communication, intercultural communication. So how I actually got into physically working in audio was about two years into my Dubai experience, listening to the radio, thinking, you know what, hey, there's some good stuff here, but I kind of miss that BBC, CBC-esque kind of show. So approached the folks over at Radio 2 and, of course, got turned down repeatedly. Uh, until they finally got bored of me calling them pretty much every other day saying, hey, I'd love to get together with Schroeder and have a talk. Schroeder Evans was on the radio at that time. So people who've been around here will remember Schroeder. And he said, okay, well, come on in. And let's, let's think about doing a two-hour kind of news conversation between music show. And that's how it all started. We, we literally started doing a, a morning show on the weekends, having a chat. He was running the board. I would you know, put some content in with him and away we went. And then he left and Jeff Price took over. And Jeff is now back in England, but long time you know, here in the city, people remember that name from Channel 4 and, and Radio 2 and Pearl, et cetera. And uh, Jeff sort of said to me, what we, so we were doing the same show and he said to me one day, he says, what do you wanna do? He says, what's your goal? He says, Pike away, what's your goal? And, and I said, I wanna be doing what you're doing. And he said, okay, that's gonna happen. And maybe, you know, not so long after that, Matthew Johnson over at Arabian Radio Network, he is still there in marketing, runs the show in marketing, said, hey, we'd love to get you on Dubai Eye. Are you interested in coming on the night show? And I said, no, because that's not my thing. And, and what do you know? And he, he basically wore me down over a, 
uh, an Eid holiday and said, why don't you come in and give it a try? So I did, went in, no radio experience because I'm a theory guy, right? And he put me on the board with sticky fingers. So people, have, again, who've been around for a while will remember sticky fingers. Yeah, yeah. Sticky sort of sit there and said, okay, well, here's how the faders work. Here's what you need to be listening to. And I'm going to go over here and eat a, a hot dog. So let me know if you need anything. And we, we started from there and, and really it, it just took off. And we, I, I did 12 years, almost 12 years at, at the Arabian Radio Network at Dubai Eye. Great years. I was really happy. And I did Nightline, picked up from, so I kind of took over from Jason Lumbar, who's passed on. And uh, before that, it was, um, you know, it, it, they, they were running, uh, Malcolm, Malcolm Taylor was running the show, then Jason was running the show, and then I took over the show. And, and away we went and we kind of made it our own. And that's how I got to meet, you know, folks like Andrew and others, because we would do that, that question and that talk and the interviews on themes. And when it ran its course, it was kind of a, well, what do we do now? And we decided to pick up and carry on with the podcasting, which I'd actually been doing with the program for a very long time. In fact, I, I kind of pat myself on the shoulder that before the station was podcasting shows, I was podcasting my own shows. So in the end of the process, when the station started podcasting and the network started podcasting, they never transferred all my podcasts over. They just took the feed from mine because I've been doing it for so long. So I kind of took that as a, you know, a trust and, and they, you know, they were happy with what was going on, but yeah. so we've, we've always been kind of trailblazing and trying to figure out how to create that content that people want to listen to. And that's how we carry through with podcasting. Yeah, do you know, I mean, it's, it's funny. So, you know, I, we also have an audience of people, James, who um, who maybe, you know, don't live in Dubai or aren't kind of familiar with uh, Dubai Eye or, or Nightline. But Nightline was kind of very different to, I guess, what it sounds, right? It wasn't, you know, it, it was more like a kind of evening show as opposed to kind yeah. of like a night night show. Um, you know, it's funny because like, you know, when you say Nightline and, it, you know, I was just thinking about sort of the early years, you know, prior to the show. and um, do you remember that TV program, Midnight Caller? Yeah, for sure. Right. right. And, and, so, and so I'm always conscious of just, you know, basically showing people how old me and Andrew are each week when we kind of talk about <laughs> stuff like this. But, but that was a show from the 80s, which was genuinely like, you know, Nightline, right? Yeah. I mean, it was, it was yeah, kind yeah. of very late at night. Calling where, show, know, yeah. Yeah, and then I ended up actually watching kind of series one, episode one. Just for some, uh, just for an old phrase like just prior to this, but but you know, I mean, but, but Nightline was like a very much designed to sort of capture audiences. What after sort of seven o'clock was it? Seven, yeah, yeah. Basically, yeah. we were nine to eleven. We were eight to ten first, then we moved nine to eleven. It was it was the commuter crowd, people heading home at night. You don't want to be challenging your brain too much, but you want to have that conversation, someone to keep you awake. Just, you know, unwinding and we, we really framed it from day one. The idea was it's a conversation and it's like you're listening in on some folks sitting beside you and actually you've pulled up a chair and you're part of that conversation. And that's how we, yeah. we tried to make the program and I think it really worked like that. And it was just long form, have a chat, it, always structured. There's always something there, but the real feel was everyone's invited. and. You know, I, I can I can count on I, I can't count on my hands the number of times people would send SMSs or email in and say, you know, I listened to the entire show sitting in my carport waiting to go in because I just wanted to continue hearing what someone was saying or what that story was or what was going on. And, you know, it was just like we were part of the family. So it was it truly did what it needed to do. And, and that, that, you know, to this day, it feels really good to know that. Yeah, I mean, because you, you ended up having, I guess, multiple shows, multiple topics. I think that's quite interesting as a concept as well, right? Because, yeah. you know, I think that's, that's quite challenging. I guess, you know, it's, you know if you, it's almost like you're forced to kind of learn about different areas. But how did you kind of deal with that? So, you know, that, so basically, the, if you listen to all the shows over the period that we did them, because we would change them up, mostly when I would get bored. So it was also really lucky that the, the station management kind of said, okay, James, go do your stuff. And I would let them know and say, hey, you know what? I want to do a cooking show. And they, well, do you have a person who you can do it with? Yeah, okay, go ahead and give it a try. Or when we wanted to start doing the car show, 
everyone in the front office kind of thought, really, is anyone going to care about this show? Like, really, is it going to work? And said, but they, they kind of said, give it a try. Let's see what it does. And so part of what we, what, what I did, so it was really like me. And, and in the end, I, I had some help with, with one of the techs who would hang out, which was great. Esther would, would stick around and, and sometimes she would have replacements. So it was really great. But otherwise I just sort of, in the early years I had a producer and then things changed, but the, the core idea of what we did on Nightline was, are, are, am I actually interested in it? So if I was interested in it, the show worked. If I wasn't interested in it, we never did those shows. So I was, in, I was interested in tech. I was interested in food. I was interested in cars. I was interested in health. I was interested in medical stuff just because, you know, that's kind of cool. So we did a health show, we did a medical show, we did a car show, we did a tech show, and we just did all these shows over and over again, following what was going on. So just in a sense, by osmosis, you start to get, a, get familiar with the different topics and learn some of the things. And, and I got to say, the, the medical show with, with um, Sean Petherbridge and Shireen Habib was one of my favorites because we would never take calls on air for that show only because people would share enormous amounts of information about themselves that it was just like, no, I don't want to know about all this stuff on air. We don't want to share it. But we used to play a game where someone would, would type in and say, okay, I've got this problem with a skin rash and they describe it and I'm taking this and I'm doing that. And then they turn around and we go, James, what do you think we should do? off air. And I would say, well, based on what you've said over the last you know, two years, I think this is the problem. This is what it might be. And probably you want to think about prescribing this. And nine times out of 10, they'd go, that's a pretty good assessment. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> I, can't, I can't believe that these shows are all based on interest. So I kind of almost feel I'm pleased that I'm still around in one of your shows that that's first and foremost. So it must be interesting. And two, I can't believe you haven't done a, you haven't not doing a Shania Twain show. I, mean, I did a music show. Interest. Oh no, okay, we did right. a music show. And right, that right. was, and, and Shania was factored in almost all the time. I would work <laughs> Shania in. In fact, the, you know, Paul Kelly started it with me. And, and when we moved on, it was interesting because I would almost always base every assessment of any group that we did on music, either country music by Shania or the eighties. Everything was revolved around that. So but we did that show for, for the longest, right, right up to the end as well. So we had a music show. And that, that was actually the craziest show I did because half of the show I played Arabic music on English language radio. And it, I would play the entire songs or death metal. I played a lot of death metal too. But I would play all of these songs and no one ever got upset. In fact, audiences would, would you know, people would get back and just say, oh, where'd you get that song? Can I, where can I find it? And they were always indie recording artists. So it was easy to find them and they were happy for us to play them. And a great story by one of my favorite Lebanese bands, Adonis. And I actually got to meet these guys. They only sing in Arabic. And I met them and I was featuring them. We were recording some songs here in the, in the city to put on the, on the show. And the guys look over at me and, they, and I'm telling them my favorite songs and they go, but do you even understand what we're saying? And I'm going, not a clue, but it sounds really good. And they just laughed and said, fair on ya. <laughs> It's, uh, it, you know, it's funny, I think the first time I switched on to your uh, music show and it was kind of mid-Arabic song playing and first thought in my mind is, shit, who's died? You know, because where, where, where we are, right? The yeah. second that we hear Arabic music on an English language show, that means, you know, something terrible has happened and someone important has passed away. So, you know, I remember kind of thinking, uh, you know, this is going to be a problem, I wonder who it is. Yeah. And, um, and then all of a sudden you're kind of, you're up next, you're talking about this song, but <laughs> now I know that you had no idea what it was, what it meant or what it was about. So what, what we used to do is I used to get an, Ar an Arabic speaker to listen to the songs for me. And we always had some Arabic speakers working with us to make sure it wasn't political. It wasn't talking about drugs. There was no alcohol in it and they weren't trying to overthrow any governments. As long as it didn't have that, we were good to go. So <laughs> Free reign. Go for it. Just go get involved. Yeah. Brilliant. But I think I want to I want to go back to your uh, the podcasting piece because, like I said, I you know I, I reckon Andrew the first conversation we had about podcasting was when you'd first been on the show uh, with yeah, James. It was right? yeah, it was it was James. I mean, I had back then I wasn't I wasn't listening to podcasts for sure. I don't think I was. I kind of uh, was perhaps in the peripheral that you know heard about them, but um, yeah, I mean, I we've we've got. Um, a, 
good friend of ours, Kelly Jones, uh, to, to thank for, for kind of our introduction. And I mean, I went through a vetting process. So I think it was kind of, you know, the first show Kelly was there and it was okay, this is this guy, Andrew, and you know, they'd see if this works. Um, and I was actually quite surprised when I went up to the studio, you know, you had this impression of, of like this huge setup and I got there and there's James. I'm like, yeah, okay, cool. So who's running the board? Who's running? And yeah, that's me. And, and who's answering? Yes. Yeah, that was me. And, and who's taking the course? Oh yeah, me. So there was kind of like a thousand hands. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I, I kind of, when we first did that and, and then he was like, yeah, well, we've got listeners. I think one of the things, first thing she said, we've got listeners in this university in China. I was like, well, yeah. <laughs> how are they doing that? Because I mean, this, this was before streaming. I don't think even the radio was streaming then, potentially no, online. in my so. early days, you know, and you're like, no, well, you know, I package it up and it goes on automatic, I think it was that yeah. time. Um, yeah. You know, and it was kind of, it's out there. Okay, cool, so cool, how do I get it? And at that time, it was Apple Music. Uh, you know, an Apple and obviously iTunes and yeah. So, and then coming back in, we actually did, uh, we did our own podcast back then. I mean, if you remember, I mean, we did like a, a, a business podcast. We kind of played around with, we got, we got a setup, we got the mics. Uh, you, you helped us with that, uh, James at that time. Uh, you know, so yeah, that was the first introduction yeah. to that world was through James. So what, was, what, what made you do that, James? What was your idea back then when nobody was really talking about podcasting? It, you know, it, it was really simple. I just figured, hey, we're going on air. We're creating this great content. It's getting listened to, and then it's gone. And I thought, what a waste. I mean, what a real waste. What if we just, and all I used to do was grab the content from a headphone jack into my computer and record it onto my computer. So I was, it was as old school as you could get to, to record that. And I just thought, wow, if I, A, a little bit of vanity, I wanted to have copies of my shows, but B, then I could put it up somewhere and let people listen to it and refer back to it. And, you know, I had someone the other day who got in touch with me not so long ago and said, hey, do you remember that show we did back in 2000 and whatever? You wouldn't by chance have a copy of it. I was like, well, yeah, actually I do. And why not? Well, let's, let me repodcast that up right now. And, and so it was just this whole idea of not wasting that time and that effort and that energy and that really that great, those great conversations, that great content, throwing it away. So it was a way to, to save it and keep it and use it again. And, and so, you know, it was out there, you, you kind of recorded it, you put it on uh, Podomatic, uh, you had these guys in China uh, listening to it. But how did you know, it, you know, how did you know other people were listening to it? Any kind of ideas in terms of were you getting information or feedback or, what, you know, once you got it out there, what did you know was happening with yeah. it? So the, the best thing, that, and I think this is the, the great challenge right now with terrestrial broadcasting. So we're still in Dubai, around the world, you know, you go to the States, you go to Europe, go to England, people are listening to radio, but do you really know who's listening to radio? So right from the bat, I was using Podomatic is what I started with. And the only reason I started with Podomatic, it was easy, it was really affordable. I used a paid version to get more storage, but I got a dashboard. So I knew how many people were tuning in, how many people were downloading. I knew where they were from. I knew how much they were listening to. And I knew some information about the, the, the actual demographics of that audience. So I, I had numbers. So when people would say, well, how many people are listening to your radio show? You know, they got a diary. Maybe it's right. Maybe it's a good sample they used. Maybe it's not a good sample. Do we really know who's listening? And, and at the end of the day, going back to the 60s or you looking right now in 2020, do we really know who's listening? Not really. Like they, there's a lot of attempts made to figure that out. And, and at any station that says, oh, 200,000 people are listening to this program is like, really? Give me their names. And, and I sort of looked at it and said, okay, I don't have 200,000 listening, but I know for a fact that a thousand people have downloaded my, my podcast and I have their IPs. I mean, I, and in some cases I would have their email addresses. So it's suddenly I have this organic audience who's chosen to download a program and listen to it, which to me was, was kind of like, okay, hold on a second. This is, this is gold here because these people are now embracing the entire package and they're making that, that commitment to it by actually putting it onto their computer and putting down. Now, do I know that they actually listen to the whole thing? In some cases, if they listen to it through the player, I know exactly what they listen to. If they downloaded it onto their machine, well, then it's theirs. But 
I'm, I'm going to operate on the assumption that, so you have d double things, but if someone downloads it, they're going to listen to something because why would right. they spend that time and, and that storage? And, and that was the other side when I was podcasting, I was really cognizant of keeping this file size really small. So when I first started, I actually really made those files small so that it wouldn't take up a lot of storage or bandwidth because bandwidth and storage was a big issue with, with streaming audio. Now it's not a big issue. So I, I keep them full size. But it was really, have, I had numbers. And I think that's what would really distinguish things from the content that I was doing live on air. I had concrete numbers of, of what people were doing and, and what shows they liked and what shows they didn't. And, and through the podcasting channels, it created a way for ratings or emails and, and feedback, direct feedback that then I could feed up with the SMSs I was getting and the physical comments on, on the radio. So it, it really became this, this nice package. And, and I guess alongside, you know, more people kind of listening to your shows and downloading them, did, did you feel that kind of more opportunities were opening up for you on the back of that as well? Or was it, you know, more aligned with radio or did you feel the podcasting network was really the future? I, I think at first it was just an extension of the radio and, and I wasn't really thinking, oh, hey, this is great. This is a great business opportunity to make things a little bit smaller or to, to create educational content. I think by, by the time I was at, when I was at TED in 2009, that's when TED started with TED Ed and they started with TEDx and they, they were really starting to change the way they were doing videos in 2009 and really pushing things. And that sort of, a, in my mind, became a real nice, a nice segue point for, hey, there's a lot of content out there that, that people don't even realize that they could create, put together in small bite-sized pieces or long, you know, meals of content. And I, I really started to understand and, and it started to crystallize in my head that unlike radio that's very structured and has a very particular way of working that in, in some cases it's perpetuated by, well, this is how it's all, always been done. And, and on some podcasts, and even when I started, it was just the radio put on air. And, and there's a whole bunch of podcasts that are like that because it saves time and they can just break them up. It's pretty easy. I don't know if they're the best podcasts out there, but they're a form of podcast. But I think what I realized when I was at Ted was that here I am meeting all these people five, 10, 15 minutes in at, at a time. And if you just put on your phone and grab that memo audio and have, have this chat about things, people are actually interested because people would say, Oh, who did you meet? Oh, I, you know, I met the, I, I, I remember sitting in this, this Indian restaurant and this lady was sitting beside me and, and I, you know, to this day, I don't remember her name, but she was one of the writers of sex in the city. I probably should have remembered that name. And, and there she was, she was telling me, and, and I say, this guy's complaining on the floor and I'm going, I'm going, who's this guy complaining about his boat and the hull and he's got to put the staff up in some Island. And she said, well, that's the guy who, who owned Rockport before he sold it. And I go, oh, okay. So, you, you, <laughs> so you're having these like five minute conversations. And I realized that this is, this isn't propriety. This is just really fun, interesting stuff that lends itself to another medium. And, and I realized that you've got your traditional broadcasting that's creeping over into podcasting, which makes sense. That's how TV worked. It just copied what was being done on radio. Radio just copied what was being done with variety shows that were live and, and things. So there's always that, that, that kind of follow through, but there's also all this content happening around us that people might be interested in and not necessarily these giant audiences. And I know everyone wants to have a Joe Rogan audience, like why not? But honestly, I'm happy if I get, you know, a hundred people who are really interested in what I'm talking about and they're going to share it with another hundred people and say, Hey, I learned this. And to me that, that becomes really valuable in that it's being actuated and worked well. Again, would I love to have a million people listening to me? Sure. Yeah. Why, who wouldn't? And would that really work well to merchandise shirts and glasses and hair product and, you know, my purse and my other purse and yeah, sure. And that might come, but why you see, you see inside joke here. I'll show you. I'll show you later.
But well, James, James does have a purse, so I mean, yeah. let's, just get, let's just get that out there. So I know Some, it's a bit strange, but uh, he's a grown man and he does have not one but two purses. Some, will, some call it a man bag. Why mince words? It is a full blown purse. Anyway, I think I think I think mince is the right word there. <laughs> but and, and so you know, for me, that became the whole thing. Is like, wow, there's all this content. Sometimes people don't really like talking and they don't want to share stuff. And what I realized really quick with doing the radio, it's a lot like doing school stuff, is if you get people talking and you're decent enough to keep their conversation going, they're going to tell you these great stories and these great things. And if you just put a microphone on, and as long as they know it's there, but if you put a microphone on, they'll forget that the microphone is there. And that content is gold and that might inspire someone someone can learn something from it or they might just have a laugh with it as well and i think that to me became sort of that push to start experimenting a little bit more with podcasting and, and saying well what can we do with it and how can we work well with it yeah yeah i think, I think that's you, really interesting yeah so, I, was on, gonna, I was just going to say how were you so obviously you had um that that was getting distributed across the pod network but i mean you obviously i know at the time you're quite active on social right so from a Twitter perspective and then Instagram came in, I mean, you, you, I guess you were consciously pushing that out as well, just making sure that people kind of knew it was there. Yeah. And I still do that now. I'll, I, I'll push out my content on, on Instagram, on Twitter, on LinkedIn, and, and just let people know that, that it's here. And it's now it's just gotten a lot more sophisticated in a sense. So using different apps like i use headliner which is a wonderful app that you you literally just put your rss feed in it'll go and listen to your entire show and then you just tell it well how much of the show do you want to make into a little visual and do you want to use a 20 second clip or a 30 second or a minute and it'll do it through ai and pick out something for you and if you don't like it you can go in and find a new clip for yourself i would say you know 75 percent of the time the clip that it picks is pretty darn good and, and so it makes it really easy then I can throw it if, you know, if you're, if you go to anything that we're doing right now with Potaholics with a K or the James cast every week, every time a show comes out, I'll fire out one of these things. So you get 20 seconds or a minute of the conversation and then, Hey, here's the link either go directly to, we, we use anchor now or iTunes or Google or Spotify or Deezer or wherever you want to go and, and get that content. And so it's, it's just become really easy now to get it into people's ears and, and let people pick and choose. Like, okay, I want to listen to a little bit of this. I want to listen to a little bit of that. And they at least know what's available and what they're going to get. And I find if I do that little audio clip way more, I get much more traction off of a show in the short term than I do if I don't do the audio clip in the long term, they all kind of even out. Yeah. That's, that's, that's interesting. Yeah, I think, I think one of the points you said earlier, James, is, um, you know, that you'd much rather have, you know, a smaller audience that are kind of, you know, listening and engaged. Um, I think that's part of the challenge because I guess, you know, a lot of people are always kind of wondering, look, if I, if I do launch my own podcast, who's going to listen to it? And, and I'm just going to relate it back to this show. So me and Andrew for a long, long time, we're talking about we should do some sort of show, right? I mean, you know, we, we both kind of like talking, but we didn't really know, you know, should it be a podcast, should it be a webinar? And I guess in the end, sort of COVID dictated. But I think the key to it is what's kept us going, you know, and we kind of jokingly said at the beginning that, you know, we kind of scheduled for eight episodes. You know, we're 15 deep in now, but what's kept us going is I think with technology today, we've been able to kind of attribute the impact of this webinar on our own business. You know, and I think from that kind of B2B perspective uh, or that kind of, you know, corporate perspective, being able to say, well, actually, you know, what we're putting into this is a few hours a week, but mm. actually I can now draw a straight line between that time investment and the money that we re uh, generate on the back of this. And, and I feel that's incredibly powerful, but, you know, I guess what I'm getting at is, you know, audience size doesn't really matter as long as it's the right audience, right? Yeah, I, I think exactly. Are you hitting the right audience and do you care about what you're doing and why are you doing it? Like if you're doing it to make money, well, okay, then you've got to be thinking, how am I going to get sponsorship for this? How am I going to make this work? And, and I think a lot of times we fall into that trap of old media where you've got a marketing budget and they're going to sponsor the show and they're going to put some ads in that are going to disrupt the content. And, 
you know, I, I, I don't think that model works anymore. I, I mean, I'd much rather have someone say, hey, you know what? We're, we're gonna, we're interested in what you're doing. You know, we'd love you to talk about it during the show and can you bring, bring it in or can we, can we get you to interview someone that we're doing and, and be upfront and say, hey, you know, so-and-so has sponsored the show. Kind of like what Joe Rogan does. And you do that at the start or, you know, when you listen to Tim Ferriss, that's what he does. And it's finding that right balance. But I think that becomes, you know, when you've got patronage in that way, I think it works a lot. I think it makes it a lot more interesting for, for people who are tuning in and it allows them to stay focused in on that content. And, and so it's yeah. just figuring out, well, but if you don't, if you're not interested in it, it's gonna be very hard to do a show on anything. And, and I think that becomes the big challenge for people who wanna do podcasting is just figure out what you're interested in. And, and I always say to people, and it's, it's crazy, but I, I say, look, don't be thinking about what other people are thinking. Do you care about this topic? Do you care about it? Can you, you know, find the people to, to sustain it or can you sustain it yourself? And, and if you say, yeah, I want to do a cooking show and I want to talk about breakfasts and yeah, I can do it every day or I can do one a week and yeah, I can sustain this, then do it. Well, who's going to listen? Just do it and see and put it out there and tag it correctly and tell your friends about it. And you know what? People will tune in, people will be interested and, and maybe you'll go viral. And I think that's, yeah when you look at the stuff that's on YouTube now, which it becomes another channel we, we distribute stuff through. But when you, when you look at that, some of the stuff there, like how did that guy ever, you know, what was I watching the other day? Oh, I shared it with Andrew. It's a guy who refurbishes old watches and shoes and whatever. Yeah. It's got a complete show on how he takes an old pair of Adidas shoes and turns them into a brand new pair or takes an old Tag Hauer watch, yeah. takes it all apart, cleans and puts it back together. No talking, just visuals. And you're glued to it. And it's like, who would have thought someone would like that? And, and you know, I take it right back to, to radio, early radio, when one of the staples on early radio was sports broadcasting. And even this happened in TV. People said, TV was another example of this. When, when they started broadcasting golf on TV and people were saying, who's going to watch golf? Who's going to watch Formula One? Like in the early days of TV, these were big questions because no one knew. And lo and behold, sports television, sports radio is the bomb. Like that's what people watch. So I think it's get out there, do the content and, and you know, obviously see what other people are doing, but do your thing. Yeah. And enjoy. I, think, I, think, I think it's a great point. Look, I think, I think let's talk about some stats. I, I pulled up some data from, um, from the US, I think there's a lot of kind of podcast data available over there. So I found some very kind of recent data, but just before I do that, Andrew, I think our um, our first potential uh, show ho uh, show sponsor is watching today. Um, so let's just give a shout out to uh, Paul Bridger from Rove, who will shortly be entering into uh, sponsorship talks with us. Um, but we'll talk <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, we'll I, I think that we'll you, you just that. mentioned there, you've got to you've got to you've got to be interested. Um, Ahmed and I, when we first sat down and, and kind of discussed this, it was just interest-based. It was kind of, we do it because we love it. Um, yeah. However, if there's a sniff of money, um, fantastic, right? So, I mean, if, that, if that's happening, and if it doesn't happen real quick, I'm out. I'm just, I'm just saying now, I'm, I'm tapping out. I think we need to, I think we need to, yeah. we need to start monetizing it. <laughs> yeah, Paul's, Paul's listening, Paul's listening. All right, so we're good. That's it. So, so James, I'm gonna throw some stats at you. Uh, like I said, very kind of US-centric stats. And, and I think what would be good is just to maybe uh, qualify that with your own experience. Um, you know, do you think this kind of applies on the kind of local or regional level? Um, and, and yeah, whether this kind of rings true to you. So one of the first one of these I've got is uh, young people aged 18 to 44. So I think that includes me, but possibly not you, Andrew. Uh, I think make I'm up. still in there. <laughs> hanging in there. Uh, so, so, so young people aged there, 18 to 44, make up 67% of the podcast audience. Does that sound? Does that sound about right, James? I I think it depends where you are, and it depends what you're looking at. And I I, I don't know. I, the reason I say that is I'm I'm so I'm looking at the stats right now for potaholics. And so maybe it's the content, maybe it's what's going on, but I would say looking at it, 25% of the, well, 25% of the, the listeners are between the 28 to 34, another 27, 35 to 44, and another 20%, 49 to 59. 
So possibly. Now, the, the only thing that becomes interesting is, as I do a, another podcast called the James Cast, where often I will repackage potaholic stuff. So it's the same content, totally different listening group. So 18 to, to 24, huge. And then the, the much older group, the, the, the 50s to the 60s, whereas in the middle, there's nothing. Same, same podcast, a little bit of a different introduction. I might shorten it a bit, but it's basically the same show and it's attributed to the same place with a different listening public. So, okay, so, I, very, yeah, so it's a quite a diverse audience of listeners. It's, you wouldn't be kind of limit it to sort of younger people as they, they class No, I don't it. think so. Okay, yeah, I don't think so. Okay, cool. The next hour, I think, was quite interesting. So the average listener listens to seven different shows per week. Um, and the reason I thought that was interesting is I think the way that we all sort of consume TV now is different, right, to what it used to be. Right. And, you know, so I think a lot of us kind of maybe binge watch maybe one or two shows a week, if, if that. So, you know, does that mean kind of, uh, you know, podcasting now, I don't know, taps into some of that space, do you think? Probably. I, I think there's there's a huge opportunity for curation. I think Spotify does a good job of that, and and Google does a good job of that, uh, especially where you start grouping things together. But you know that's and I think that's the huge challenge for any podcast is getting people to to try and listen to it for the first time and figure out, hey, is this something that I'm interested in? Does this catch my attention? And while I, I I'm not surprised that we probably listen to about seven podcasts a week. I mean, you know, if we take this microcosm of us, how many different podcasts do you listen to in a week? Amit, how many, how many are you listening to? Yeah, easily, easily five or six. Easily. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. A Andrew? Yeah, so, yeah I mean, yeah, so I just, I'm, I only listen to my one. Um, so I don't, I listen to one. <laughs> no, I just, um, yeah, no, I mean, I, yeah, I, I'm actually probably, yeah, a lot more than that, actually. Um, okay. Yeah, I, I'd kind of say when, some, I mean, actually, to be fair, some of the shows I listen to are monthly um, right. and some are weekly. So, yeah, it, it, it's kind of, uh, and if I have a run on, say, Adam Carolla, he's a daily podcast. So, I mean, it, it would depend. But, yeah, yeah we're, I'd, I'd easily say we hit that number every week. Yeah, I would say, yeah. you know, about a handful is where people are. Between five and seven sounds about right. And, and yeah. sometimes yeah. more, sometimes less. Depends on the day. So, and it depends, you might have music podcasts, you might have information podcasts, entertainment podcasts. It just, it just depends, but yeah, for sure. I, that's probably, probably in the ballpark. Yeah. And I think, I think what's, what's interesting is just that kind of whole wide range of different types of podcasts that yeah. somebody might listen to, you know, on, in an average day, for example, right. You know, it could be very, yeah. you know, it could be business focused and then it could be just, you know, something pure passion related after that. Yeah. Um, yeah a couple more. So weekly listeners spend, six and a half hours per week on average listen to i mean that's i think that's pretty significant yeah um you know essentially one that's equivalent to maybe one working day and then the last one um which i feel was really interesting is 80 percent of listeners listen to the entire episode of a podcast they've listened to and, and i think why that's important is because if we look at how the social platforms operate the way they class views is is highly manipulative right yeah. You know, so, yeah. in, you know, in some cases, a few seconds of a five minute video will constitute a view. And yeah. that's not accurate. Whereas I feel as if, you know, podcasts, if they are engaging, you know, 80% of their listeners to listen to the entirety of a program, I think that's, that's, uh, that's phenomenal, right? In terms of engagement. Yeah. And I, I think our, my data from the podcast that I've been doing shows exactly that people are listening to 80 to 85%. And that's the majority. There's people listening more. So they're listening to almost the entire program. And I'm thinking, man, if people are taking the entire program in, that means you don't have to front load stuff. You've, you've got a great opportunity to build it out. And, and I think it just, they, they just follow through on those stories and they're interested in where's this going and how's this going to end. And, and, and in some cases, the feedback comes, it's like you're part of the family and they're just we, you know, if you don't do a show, I've, I've had emails where we, Andrew and I hadn't done a few tech talk shows for a long time. I don't know what got in the way. It was a, it was a good month that we didn't do a show. And I was getting emails. What happened to tech talk? It's like, and it's like, and, and I'd get messages. I'm not so interested in tech, but I just like, I just like the banter you guys have about stuff 
or the, the best one I got recently was you, and it was talking about Andrew and I, so I was really talking to Andrew, but saying that, you know, you guys actually allow me to sound really smart when I'm talking to people about tech because you break it down and make it so easy. But I'm going, wow, this is, that's exactly how you want people to, to interact with your programming. And they're saying, they realize, hey, you know what, if we're going to talk Nokia phones, or if we're going to talk about what's, what's going on in game world, and, you know, we're, we're talking Fortnite today. Yeah. I don't, I don't play Fortnite. I mean, I've read the stuff, but I can't, I, you know, I, I can't internalize it. Andrew is right there. He's playing games on his, on his devices. So it, that conversation then becomes really good. And people, like I said, they're listening to the whole show to get that stuff. And that's, that's better than radio. That's better than our traditional media because I think that's the big draw. That's the big problem when we, when we talk about, again, going back to that marketing where the marketing guys are, are missing it is you don't know that people have listened to the two hour show. They haven't, they've listened to 12 minutes and then they've left. So how's that value? No, yeah, absolutely. It makes a lot of sense. And I think just, just to backtrack a little bit, James, um, I think the official line is it's Andrew's son who plays Fortnite <laughs> and, yeah. and, and, and Andrew supervises. Exactly. Yeah, I, I'm just, just case, I'm, uh, I'm purely, I'm purely there. Yeah, I'm, I'm purely there to entertain my son. It's, uh, that says what that really that we're really about. <laughs> so, so James, I want to kind of uh, just kind of move into that space now, where you know if if, so, if you know someone is out there, whether they you know related to a business or they just want to launch their own podcast. I know we've got two listeners at the moment who are very keen on um, on launching their own podcast, and those are my my daughters, for example. Um, but I mean, what advice would you give, you know, in terms of going out there, creating content, uh, you know, what should they kind of do? How, how should they kind of go about that whole process? So, I, I mean, the first thing is just figure out what you want to talk about. And I think people get hung up on the equipment first, as opposed to, okay, what do I want to do? And, and just experiment with, with what you've got, what, you know, you've got a phone, you've got a computer, just like we're doing here on, on a zoom meeting, you could create a podcast off of zoom, just, you know, get a sense of, of what it is you want to actually create and, and start experimenting with, with the conversation and how you're going to put it together. And if you're going to put some, some sounds with it or, or show things, I think really just figuring out, okay, what is it that I want to talk about? Then I think what becomes really important is figuring out how often do you want to do this and, and be honest because whether creating any content is an investment of time and your time is valuable. And so are you looking at doing something for an, an uh, you know, 10 minutes every, you know, once a week, are you looking at creating something that's a 30 minute to an hour once a week or every day or twice a month or once a month? What, what kind of time span are you looking at? And, and are you going to be able to sustain it? Like what's your sustainability plan? Is this start now? And I'm going to, and, and, and if you're going to do it every other day or every week, you got to do it every week. And that, that, that can be hard. Sustainability is a really big factor. And the, and the, the, the sustainability issue becomes once you start putting it out, people start to become accustomed to it being there and they start looking for it. So I had a, a, a great example that I, I had some content that I was putting up on the James cast and I stopped putting any content up in March. So not this March, March previous, I stopped putting content. I don't know. I got busy. I thought, ah, who, who listens to this anyway? And I hadn't really been looking at the stats. And then I looked at the stats and I was getting, you know, 600 listeners a day. And it's like, wow, I probably should have been looking at that dashboard because I wasn't really putting any new content up there. I was just recycling content. I was still getting 600 people a day listening to recycled stuff. Like, wow, I was doing something right. And so I just stopped and it took three months for that, that listenership of 600 a day to drop to almost zero at the low point when I kind of went back and looked at it and went, well, that was dumb. I've, I've just now totally alienated a listenership down to 20 people when I had 600 a day. So I started putting content back in there and it took another four months for people because people obviously through their different channels, they subscribed, they were getting it. So it took them four months to realize, oh, Pike away's back and he's doing something and we should listen. 
And after four months of, of you know, saying, okay, I'm going to put content in at least once a week, but maybe more, but minimum, you're going to, you know, you're going to get once a week and you might get something long. You might get something short. You might get just me talking about a hotel or something, but you're going to get that content. Uh, it took four months and I'm, I'm back up to a thousand people a day who are, who are looking at the stuff, but it, but it, it dropped quick. It stayed done. And then when I started putting in it, it was a, it was a good build, but it required, and all I do, and I'm, you know, I'm not really very aggressive in promotion is I'm just using social media. So I'm just using my social accounts, LinkedIn, Instagram, and Twitter. And, and I have a web page that I'll put stuff up and it'll also cross post, but that's it. That's how people know it's out there. Unless, you know, they're, we're talking to say, Oh, what do you do? I said, Oh, go check out the James cast. And so there's a lot of word of mouth then by that too. And they say, oh yeah, that's, uh, oh yeah, okay. I'm going to go give that a look. And, okay. And I think that's, a, that's, that's, a, that's been one of the biggest challenges, I think. So where there has been some of those, you know, drop-offs obviously to, to the show. I mean, I think that element of consistency, obviously you've yeah. got that bank of content. But I mean, even when, you know, we looked at, obviously, and we'll probably get into it a bit of you, you know, leaving the radio and then, you know, all of us working on this new kind of potaholics environment. Um, it was it was that commitment to actually, you know, day one is a new entity. Don't know if anyone's listening, but we're still so passionate about it. We still yeah. uh, quite possibly like the sound of our own voice. Um, but you know, just <laughs> just to kind of keep it keep it running um, and 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 starting it and and actually getting it going. But that consistency, you know, you and I this morning were eight o'clock. Uh, and, and people that know me, I'm not a morning person, but, but I, I'm up for that. I'm, I'm kind of, you know, right, cool. We've got an hour lock in tech talk. Um, it has to get done, you know, we, yeah. um, and actually similarly, even on the show perspective, Amit and I, we, you know, we toyed around, do we move the time? Do we do this? No, it's locked in now. So even though people are coming back to work and everything, we obviously get a lot more viewership as well post live. Um, so yeah, that, that consistent element is crucial. Yeah. Can I can, can I just ask something while I've got can I, because like I said, both of you guys have been kind of you know working together on different shows uh, over over a number of years, but and and this kind of brings me to Polaholics. How important is it to have a co-host? Uh, you know, someone that you can have sort of chemistry with. Someone you know. So for example, James, there might be people out there saying, well, you know, I'd love to do a show, but it's just me. Is is that you know maybe the wrong way to do it? Is there, is there a wrong way to do it? What do you I, recommend? You know, what, what are you comfortable with? I don't think you necessarily need a co-host. It depends what you want to talk about. And I think, you, you know, you could go solo easily. And I've seen lots of, of people do that. And, and that just works. I, I was just very used to having people to bounce off. And it, it definitely makes it a lot easier because you, you've got someone that you're talking to and then you bounce to them and then you bounce back and it becomes a very conversational feel. And, and for me, that's what I was doing on the radio. So I was very used to doing that. Oh, and and, I, and when I wasn't doing, you know, an interview show, I do call in shows. So I was just very used to the conversation. So for me, it was just kind of that natural, hey, you know, this, this is a great way to get people in who are really, really focused in on their fields. I talk on the periphery, they talk on the specifics, and, and it just kind of works. And that conversation works. But absolutely, you could do it alone. It, it just you know, let it go. And, and I, as I was saying with technology, don't get bogged down with the tech because there's so many different ways to once you've, you've said, Hey, I want to do it. You know, we're over at the Rove hotel right now. They've got a podcast suite in there. It's beautiful and getting better by the day, but it's pure, it's totally functional now. Roadcaster pro road pod mics, you know, it's like, wow. I mean, this is a dream suite that they've opened up. And you want to go in and, and talk, you know, travel and tourism, just have the stuff to talk about it as long. It, and that's the thing. People always think, oh, I'm just going to talk. Are you kidding? That's deadly. I never get up and talk. Andrew will know we've always got notes, which, you know, hey, I want to talk about these ignore. five points. Yeah, we might ignore them, but they're there and we might get off track, but they're there. And I do them for yeah. every show. I mean, every time, you know, we talk cars, we've got a whole bunch of stuff I fire off to, to Glenn Power. We're going to talk DIY. I send a whole bunch of stuff over to Colin. We're talking medical stuff with Dr. Jenna. I send her a whole bunch of notes or she puts a whole bunch of notes in so that we're, we're really well prepared for any of those topics. And I think that becomes the other key thing to, that you know what you want to say and that you can do it. And obviously that you're just, you're just passionate about it. So you sound decent, but then 
you know, you can record, like I said, off your computer, you could record. We, we, I moved from pot, from Potomatic to anchor. And that was a big move for me because I've been with Potomatic and, and I really liked it and I still like it. I think it's a great service, but anchor, which is now owned by Spotify, just created this platform for distribution and sharing, but also creation of podcasts, both desktop and through mobile app, which is phenomenal. So you can record your entire podcast through their app, put music and stuff on in between, break up shows and, and add stuff together from your show library and, and really be doing some, some crazy good stuff for nothing because they don't charge. And so their take out of, so what do they get out of it is they get to experiment with a, how, how they're using these apps with a lot of content. They are, obviously your content goes up on Spotify. They, they said to me, one of the writers and they sent multiple uh, notifications that saying, look, we, we, by you using our service, we have the right to go and sample 10, 15, 20 seconds of your content and use it in, in our, you know, publicity. And I'm thinking, you want to use my content in your publicity? Absolutely. I'm very <laughs> happy with that. So, you know, it, there, it, that becomes the sort of the easy side in a sense and, and quite addictive, actually, when I say addictive, the, you know, the recording of it, you just get better. You, maybe you're going to use some better mics. You're going to use different things. That's all come down in price. So it's really affordable. Even the Rodecaster Pro, the mixer that they're using at the Rove and that I personally use, that, that is radio studio quality equipment that 10 years ago was $100,000. That now for, yeah, I, I don't know, it's like a 2,000 durhams and change. So, you know, what are we talking about? A thousand dollars, maybe just under a thousand, you know, 500 a yeah. do the math, but it's so affordable that you can create great content with all the bells and whistles that to create podcasts at home or, or wherever you are. And, and people always say, well, do I need a studio? And, and I think the Rove is a perfect example. They took a room and they converted it. They haven't put any soundproofing in yet. They will a couple of panels. And I was talking to them today about that, but the room as it is now is 100% functional and it sounds great. There's no big echo when you're using the mics properly and that's just talking a little closer to them. It, it's really, it's become so easy. So the, the equipment's easy to get. You could use your phone. You could use some stuff that I use with, with anchor FM, anchor.fm if you want to go check them out on their stuff. But a couple, you know, just doing it with the mic off your, off one of these, like I'm using here into your phone, you can get great audio. And then it's just a matter of editing it together or just doing it live. If you like doing it in one big stream, great. If you want to edit together, well, then you got to have a little editing software. I, I've talked to, to, you know, if folks are using Windows stuff or an older version of, of the Mac operating system, not Catalina, Audacity works really well. Uh, you've got GarageBand, you've got numerous other tools that you can use that are, that don't cost anything. If you want to spend a little bit of money, uh, Adobe Audition to me is the go-to and you get that on the cloud and it's really, really affordable and offers you all sorts of bells and whistles that make every podcast sound brilliant and, and a little bit of editing, put it together, export it, send it off. And it's, the more you do it, the more you get addicted to, oh, I've got to, I want to remove some of that background sound or hey, I want to add some sound effects or I want to tweak the voices a bit. And that, that becomes kind of fun and you kind of get obsessed with it, but it's, it's really liberating that you kind of have this complete control from starting that conversation, putting it together to being able to, to package it in a sense and then get it out there. And literally you could do it all on a phone if you really wanted to, but with a, with a computer and a phone, you're done. And, and in fact, that's kind of a crazy thing because sometimes I use a couple of wireless mics that I run into a phone as the recorder that becomes my MP3 player. And I just then use that audio and again, you know, splice it up a little bit, but I use that to make podcasts. And so I could be in a room, you know, having a chat with Amit and he says, oh, I was just at this conference. Like, well, hold on a second, give me two minutes. And I plug a couple things in, put this mic on, and we can talk about the conference and that becomes excellent content because someone might, might have never been to South by Southwest. 
and you've been to South by and they might say, oh, you know, well, what's it like? Or what's, what's it like going to HubSpot and the hub, what's the HubSpot conference called? Inbound. Inbound. You know, they might say, well, what's that like? Is it worth it? And we might've just had this conversation and they could say, oh yeah, I have this podcast and, and they might Google and then there you come up. Because if you're Googling, say, and as I distribute through Anchor, it goes into Google Podcasts, it goes into the iTunes stuff, it goes into Spotify. So the more you're podcasting and the more you're loading and the more you tag it, it comes up and inbound. Oh, yeah, here's a, you know, here's a two-year-old podcast by James talking to, to Amit about inbound. And it's like, wow, you know, so it, it's that simple. And again, it's, it's just, you know, people always say, oh, I don't like the sound of my voice. Who likes the sound of their voice? No one does, but you're not listening to it. So just create the content <laughs> and, and go with it, right? And, 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 and you know, if, if people don't like what you're doing, if you just get tired of doing it, then stop doing it. Yeah, but, I agree. And, and you know, for me, it's now it's become an addiction. It's, it's really actually, so it's come to the point now that I record every single lecture I do and I post them as podcasts as well. Because I, I just started thinking, what's the point of standing up there and talking about these things? And someone might say, oh yeah, but you know, how many times have you taught film criticism? I say, I don't know, enough that I can count them on both hands and say, well, so what's new in a lecture? And I said, every lecture has something new in it. There's always a new spin on something. And I just kind of take it as that, if someone said, well, what, what's your, what are your lectures like? You know, or, you know, this is the other side. You say, well, are you getting money for the podcasting? Not necessarily. But hey, if I was looking for a teaching gig and someone said, hey, well, what's your teaching like? Well, here, why don't you listen to my podcast? Yeah. And they can listen to a lecture and say, yeah, well, that's one. Because anyone can do one lecture, great. And I say, yeah, well, go listen to 30. Or, you know, how do you do public speaking? Yeah. Well, here, you know what? They're online. Go and listen to my 14 yeah. lessons on public speaking. And, and, and that, you know, the beauty of the podcast is you got the audio. And if you've got great notes, you can link them too. So suddenly, you get this giant package and it's, it's very liberating in that sense. And I think by doing all that, when we start talking money, someone might say, they might say, you know, are you making any money off your podcast? And I say, no, but it opens the door to someone who says, Hey, do you want to help me out with a podcast or, and, or, you know, we'd love to, we'd love to talk to you. Would you be interested in hosting us on your podcast? And they're going to promote the heck out of that because you're giving it to them. And they then come back to, hey, who is the guy who interviewed you? Oh, yeah, we'd like to talk with him to help us do some interviews. Or, or someone says, hey, we want to create our own podcast. How do you do it? It's like, hey, I'm going to tell you how to do it. I'm going to show you how to do it. Here's all the equipment. Are they going to be able to actually do it? Yes. Do they have the time or the energy or the passion? Probably not. So you can then go in and help them, and, and you might charge for that. And that, that becomes the way that... You, you continue to perpetrate what you're doing and, and just, you know, make something off it. But I guess making something doesn't always have to be, you know, in, in hard cash. And it just depends, you know, and for me, the, the big challenge becomes people say, well, you know, you got to make money. I say, but I have a day job. And, and that's always kind of have to factor in because I'm thinking of this as a professor and as an activity and, and hey, I can write about it. And I'm not necessarily thinking about it as a revenue generation mechanism, which probably I should be because there's, there's great opportunities to do that as well. But that's, that's where you, then you bring in someone else like an Andrew and say, okay, Andrew, we got the content. How do we, how do we take this to another level so that it's not in your face revenue generation, but it's, it's helping to build that. And I, I think that becomes that big question that that's come up in, in the questions that Paul's asking saying, well, how does a small, medium-sized business do it? And say, well, figure out what you want to talk about. And you want to talk about a hotel? Do you want to talk about a kitchen? Do you want to talk about a service you offer? And when you think of that service, okay, yeah, we're, 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 we're making soap. So it might be the folks over at Camel Soap. Man, well, you got all sorts to talk about. How'd you get this started? Who's the person who did it? Why Camels? How did you do your marketing? How did you, branding and packaging? So now suddenly you've got 10 podcasts already lined up that you just have to now start putting them all together and you don't have to do them over 10 periods. You could do them all at once and then just break it up. And so for that business, suddenly they've got that little, that little add on to their web page or their web presence when they say, well, you know, who are these guys anyway? And what do they do? And are they fly by night? It was, like, Oh, hold on. I can hear them. And Oh, here's the contact. And Oh, this is really interesting. And why are they telling me this? Because they realize that if you can do it better than them, great, but you're not gonna be able to do it better than them because they're, 
already so far ahead of you in the thinking, but maybe you'll get inspired to, to do something yourself. And it becomes that little extra piece of that revenue generation and that lead generation puzzle, I think. Yeah, no, I think that's, that's really, really kind of strong and sound advice there. It's funny actually, because we, we've, uh, from some of the shows that we've recorded, we've, uh, we've got web pages which talk about this, but we've actually done just actually pasted a link to our show or embedded that show in that was relevant to that topic because you know you can read copy you can read content you can read web pages but actually here's here's maybe you know two of the partners of a business who are actually going to tell you exactly how it is over yeah you know a 45 minute show or something and and we've actually yeah. had some really good feedback on that but i think i think i'm gonna I, I just want you guys to talk about a little bit about podaholics as we wrap up i also want to thank you james for mentioning rove as well because as I did mention, you know, future sponsors of our show here. Uh, Paul's still listening. So, um, yeah, so that's, that's something that we need to follow up on. Um, I mean, they, they got a lot of mentions today. So, um, but no, you're right. They, they've, got, they've got a phenomenal offering out there today. So, you know, as James mentioned, if you do, you know, want to get started, want to maybe record your first podcast, see how it sounds. Um, you know, the Rove have got a phenomenal setup there. And, and if you come through us, then... Um, you know, we can hook you up. We, we know, we know the boss. So, um, yeah, but I guess guys, just as we kind of wrap up, tell, tell us a little bit about uh, more about Podaholics, um, how people can, you know, find your show, uh, learn more about the network. Uh, what do they need to do guys? Well, uh, I'll yeah. kick off and then Andrew and let you jump in. Podaholics was purely born at the, the last radio show that I did on Nightline. It was, it was the last one and we kind of all left and, we left with sort of put out a, a call to all of the participants saying, you know, because I, you know, I, like I said, I had a medical show, I had a music show, I had a fitness show, I had a car show and put out, put out a call to everyone and said, Hey, we've been creating this content. We're on a roll. We didn't finish because no one was listening. We didn't finish because we weren't happy with doing it. We were finished because programming changed. And does anyone want to keep doing it? And then there was a cooling off period over the summer. So people could, people moved and things changed and ideas changed. And, and Andrew and I kept in touch and we sort of got back after the summer and said, so are we doing this Podaholics? And it took us a while to come up with the name, actually. That was a really hard one. We were back and forth. Yeah. I, and, and we just sort of said, okay, well, let's start. And, and literally, it's, it's quite a big commitment to, it, it's easier with Zoom, actually, but quite a, otherwise quite a big commitment to say, because we typically have to record around schedules and everyone's got schedules and we, we tend to record in person these days as well still. So over, over, the, over the COVID lockdown, we did everything on Zoom, but now some shows are back in person. It just depends. And, you know, we, we just decided that we were going to do it. And, and this potaholics thing, we, it was sort of the cart before the horse and say, well, we got content. Well, let's start doing it. And I think for the longest time, we didn't have a website up yet. We were just purely doing on social media. And, and then finally, we, we pulled ourselves together with our website. And, and it's, it's just been this kind of interesting ride because it's the, the, the time, the, the content of the shows are all the same. And in that car show, we talk cars, but it's very much this conversation and, and it could be a 50 minute show. It could be a 30 minute show. It could be 10 minutes. It just depends on that day. And, and it, it's, it's very structured like that. There's a beginning and there's an end. And like a radio show, we have a mute, we have music and we kind of, you know, intro it like that. But once it starts, it's very much not a radio show. It really is a couple people sitting down, just having a, you know, having a cup of tea, having a chat and, and making fun of each other and, and sharing things that they've learned. Yeah. Yeah. No, hundred percent. I think it, it was kind of one of those ones that there was definitely a void um, yeah. after the, the kind of, okay, this isn't going to happen. I, I think, you know, there's obviously like, there was a core team, myself and James, uh, Glenn and Colin and, and Dr. Jenner as well. Um, that kind of still wanted to do this, right? So they still, I know Colin uses a lot of the podcast activity in his own marketing for his own business. He owns, yeah. you know, We Will Fix It. So, you know, that plays a, a huge part of, of his activity. But it was also the fact that there was, there was nothing being produced locally um, from a network perspective. 
So the, the other reason that kind of Polaholics came about is we wanted to kind of start building in more content. And, and I'd say that's, that's starting to take a bit more of momentum. So we're kind of hooking into other podcasters now. Um, you know, we're, we're looking at pulling them onto the network and then basically allowing people to, to, to kind of access a whole different, whole different range. And, and it is very, it's all over the map, right? You've got that tech, you've got fitness, you, you've got the car, you've got home improvement. Uh, James does this, uh, this show called Catch Up, um, where it's literally catching up with people that he hasn't spoken to for years, but then people that he's just met. So I, I think it's, there's, there's, there's a nice mixture of, of, of uh, different shows on there. Uh, look, digital growth show, right? So we're going to be, we're going to be putting our show uh, out to, to the, 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 the podcast environment, as you said, James, rightly so. Zoom pulls off an audio file on here, so it's fairly straightforward to then put that up on a podcast and, and kind of get that going. But I think it goes back to like we like we genuinely enjoy it, right? Yeah. So so I mean, you know, that that's 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 the big thing. You know, I mean it was we were reminiscing this morning talking about Nokia for like a yeah. good 20 minutes because they got this new <laughs> phenomenal phone uh that's out, which is buttons, is like 550 yeah. dirhams for this phenomenal yeah. phone running on Android, which is that. But we're excited about it, and I think that comes across, right? I mean, yeah. um, it, it's and even I mean, we've mixed shows, so we've kind of done. Uh, I got dragged into a uh, the a show the first time ever I got invited to talk on the Doctor Show, and he didn't tell me what it was about. And um, I, I think what we're we talking about, there's two very interesting yeah. subjects: yeah. vasectomies and cir uh, circumcision. <laughs> yeah, that was it. Um, so, so that what was great. I mean, obviously, you know, the first and, and zero. Yeah, zero. I said, literally, I've got 30 minutes. Yeah, yeah, no, come in, Andrew. And that was it. Bang. Okay, so what, this is what we're talking about. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, great. It's a bit different from Nokia phones. Um, so, 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 yeah, the, I, I think that it's, it's just that freedom, right? Um, yeah. And going back to, you know, should you start it and, and people are listening or whatever, or should you have a host or shouldn't you have a host? I, I think as long as you enjoy it, it's yeah. fine. So, I, so can, if you enjoy what you're doing, it's it's fine. I I I like having a co-host because I like having a bounce. Um, and and back to your point, James, I think it's 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 tough to, you know, if you're on your own to kind of. But if you're very passionate about something, you know, why not? It it doesn't um doesn't have to be that you get everyone involved. Um, you know, it, it it's uh it's very easy to 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 kind of just go right. Yeah, for sure. I, and you know, one of the things that for us with, with Potaholics, and it's Potaholics with a K, I always yeah. remind people because they'll think, you know, Potaholics with a C. No, no, Potaholics with a K. Yeah. And, and so that uh, sort of becomes the tag. But, you know, I always say to people, because they, they'll say, well, why are you doing this? I say, well, here we are in the UAE. It's, this is a group of people who live in the UAE. I kind of take this on a philosophical note. This is a piece of UAE culture because we're talking about so much that's going on here. But it's also UAE content. And it's, there's nothing that's influencing the content. This is stuff we're interested in. So if we're talking about cold season or if we're talking about getting your brakes done or talking about renovating your, in fact, for the last, I don't know how many episodes, Colin Thomas over at, D, at We Will Fix It Essential Maintenance Dubai is moving into a new villa that they've kind of gutted. And so we've been talking about all of the challenges and things that he's been doing. Well, that's right here in the UAE. And so when someone says, you know, well, who's your, who's your key smith, locksmith? Well, we'll tell them, hey, this is who I use. Who are you going to get your car fixed? Well, you know, I used to use this garage. Now I'm using, I'm using Glenn, but I, I didn't, you know, I was doing the car show with Glenn for I don't know how many years, and I never used him as a mechanic. I had, I had my own mechanic, and he's going, fair game. The guy knows your car. Keep using him. You're happy? Keep using him. So there's nothing... It, it's a show because we like the topics and we're interested in it. It's things that are going around us. We don't have the constraints of a marketing department saying, whoa, 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 you can't mention Nissan today. And no, 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 you can't talk about yeah. where the good play area that you like to go to or, you know, what's your favorite pool or what's the, you know, you can't talk about that. It's like, why not? Because, you know, we, we would, if we were doing this on the radio, we wouldn't have been mentioned in the Rove because someone said, whoa, we got to, we got to get marketing on there and we'll get, we'll get some yeah. money off them. And so we're just having this authentic, non-bounded conversation that isn't market driven. It's, dri it's interest driven instead of market marketing driven. And I think that's Actually, that what, was, um, no, sorry, James. no that, that to me becomes this big change in that content when you listen, cause you can still listen to the radio and there's great content there and there's times you want to listen to it. 
But other times, I, you know, I don't want to listen to content necessarily that I'm not sure, why are you talking about this? Who sponsored this? And, you know, we're doing this because we're interested in it. And, you know, would, would, some might say, well, you do it at the Rove. Hey, you know what? As, I guess in a sense, they let us come there and use it. That's, that, that could be seen as a form of sponsorship. And, and I, gotta, I, wanna, I just want to make you know, another mention of the folks over there, Naveen, who runs the show at the Rove downtown. So last week, I forgot to book the Rove podcast week because we took a week off and I did, and it was full. And the, the beauty is, and this, I'm, and I know Paul is, is listening and I'm kind of torn because I love using the podcast suite, but I also love recording in the lobby. And we were set up in the lobby last week. I made three contacts. I made three contacts with people who said, Hey, we want you to do a webinar with us for podcasting. Here's the contact. Hey, I'd love to get on your show and talk about human centered psychology. It's like, okay. And someone who walked by who I hadn't seen in a long time says, Hey, we got to have a coffee just because we were doing a podcast in the lobby of the Rove hotel. And I'm thinking Naveen allows that. He says, Hey, is it, you know, he's even coming over to me last week. He says, are you sure it's not too noisy? And I'm going, dude, my guests have walked by and haven't noticed that I'm even here. This is perfect. This is absolutely perfect. And again, works for the Rove, works for us. People are taking pictures and they're asking questions. And it's kind of like, yeah, this is a hotel that's got great Wi-Fi and it's very inclusive. And we can, we can, you know, that creativity just comes in and they see us doing it. James, I, I you're talking as, you're talking as if um, James, you're talking as if the road were already sponsoring our show. It's not quite happening. <laughs> um, just, 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 just to throw that out. Back in. Let's just talk about some other hotel brands. I can see Paul screaming. But the um, I thought I was going to take a bit of a dark turn there when you said I hadn't booked the room. So I spoke to Naveen and he went in and said, do you know who I am? Um, yeah, dude, get out of this. Like, get out, it's my chair. No. You're not seeing my name on there. Because, you know, I've only seen that ugly side a couple of times. But it's a bit rough, don't you know, when you go after people. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no, yeah, that's, 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 uh, yeah. Yeah. So, guys, I think I think we should wrap up there. So, um, so they can find the Podaholics Network on so, Spotify. Yeah. Potaholics with a K, and if you you can go to www.potaholics.com, all of the content is there, playable through that website. It links it right through to Anchor FM. So if you if you want to go and find us that way, you know the easiest way is just Google Potaholics with a K, and all of those different streams will come up. If you're if you're an Apple fan and you're using Apple Podcasts, just type Potaholics with a K into that. It'll bring up all the shows. Subscribe. Same with Google, same with Spotify, all, all of the big places you like to be, Deezer, you know, Pod Republic, we're, we're on a Stitcher, we're on all of those different formats. Awesome. And, and you can listen and it'll come to your device without you having to go find it. It'll let you know that there's new content available. And I think that's, that's the game. That's amazing. And Thank you very much, James. It's been Andrew Jordan. Thank you. Just a quickie, I just, James, sure. if people want to connect to you, right? So you've got the jamescast.com. Um, yep. And then if you kind of give out your socials and LinkedIn as well, just so if someone wants to connect with you. Sure. So if you want to find me, it's the jamescast.com. All of my socials are the jamescast, all one word. And on LinkedIn, James Pikeaway. So if you, if you get close, you'll find me. But, you know, if yeah, you can't if you figure can, that if out. You can, <laughs> if you can work you can't, out to spell his family name. <laughs> I mean, if you want to find me on LinkedIn, go to the James cast and get the spelling of my name and put it into LinkedIn. <laughs> <laughs> I still, I, even this morning, I asked him how he spells his name again and, and I've known him for years. So yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it's, 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 it. but uh, yeah, no, thank you. Uh, thank you, James. Um, thank you. I really appreciate you coming on the, the show today. And I think, um, I think on the back of this, actually, it's going to be a couple of people that, that definitely start their own. Uh, podcast. Um, uh, one thing I did forget about on the radio was there was two things that when I first went on the radio and it was don't swear um, and don't don't mention you know kind of any of those brands and I'm proud to say that I've never sworn and never sworn on this show either uh, and Amit did that again today so I'm quite pleased that uh, he's, he's, <laughs> he's broken that so I just wanted to point out as the show finished so yeah thank you James thank you for I'm a, thank you I'm a, I'm a, yeah, thank you thank you guys you've been watching the digital growth show not sponsored by Rogue Hotels <laughs> take care guys we'll, we'll catch you cheers cheers bye, bye.